I can't even fucking believe this. I've said before that uh, bad news for NFTs is the best kind of news. It sure I'm is. I'm just so sick of the NFT landscape, what they've enabled, the scams, the schemes, the crimes, yeah. the theft. And uh, this latest story is uh, just, it. I mean, mwah, chef's kiss as far as highlighting the folly of engaging with this wild, wild Take a look at this, dude. This is so good. This story concerns Seth Green. Yes, the actor. Gamers in particular might know him as the voice of Joker in the Mass Effect Mm -hmm. series. And he has been pursuing this endeavor of taking Bored Ape Yacht Club and turning that into a show. And that has been hampered by the fact that Seth Green fell for a phishing scam that has led to his... NFTs getting stolen, the NFTs that are required to actually have the rights to produce the show. I'm I'm just like, how is this possible? How could this happen? Oh my fucking god, I love it. Get smoke, it's like, it's so, so bad. Just get another JPEG, yeah. I don't understand, it's just, nice pause, it's just perfect, man. Not kidding, this is real, and let's dive right into it. I actually thought this shit was fake, and I looked it up on Twitter. The tweets are real. So it all began with this tweet by Seth Green on May 17th, 2022. Well, friends, which it reads, happened to me. Well, friends, it happened to me. Got fished and had four NFTs stolen. Board Ape Yacht Club, Open Sea Doodles, uh, Yuga Labs, please don't buy or trade these while I work to resolve. Darkwing84, looks like you bought my stolen ape. Hit me up so we can fix it. And you can see right here the images of the NFT. Why would he want to fix it? Among the- Why would he possibly want to fix it? Why would he give you your money back? Like, absolutely. And, and look at the amount of money. Like, this is worth, uh, is that 106? That's 35000 And this is uh, $24,000. And they're just gone. Evaporated. Reduced to atoms. Them being Bored Ape Yacht Club stuff that Seth Green was planning to base the... You know what is a really untapped market? An insurance company for NFTs. That is an unironically brilliant idea. Yeah, an insurance company for NFTs. Where, like, if you get your shit stolen or something like that, you can get it back or they can pay you out the value of the NFT stuff. You mean Dropbox? (laughs) No, I mean right click. Show on. Scrolling down through the it responses, you can see that there Good. is very little sympathy for this man who, you know, should have known what he's gotten into. Let's in read this read completely some of them, unregulated man. scene where scams, schemes, cons, theft, and all that jazz, crimes, all that stuff's just rampant and yeah. promoting this scene and actively partaking in it. It's just morally questionable, and there's a question of what did you expect mm-hmm. would happen? And so people have been posting things like, Seth, I have information that will lead to Darkwing 84's capture and conviction. I don't know if this oh guy my was God. joking, being sarcastic, or being for real, but Seth Green seems to have thought this was for real and seems desperate enough to be like, please Not DM. clear they did anything wrong, but if you have any info, please DM me. What are you going to message him? Hey, man. Um, can I have my picture back? He's like, no. He's like, oh, come on. He's like, no. He's like, oh, come on, man. He's like, oh, all right. Okay, Seth Green. We'll give you your pictures back. There you go. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Why would he do this? I mean, anything that could lead to his capture, to his conviction, whatever he thinks. This will all ultimately lead to... People poking fun with memes like Apes Gone with this face right here. Yeah. Scrolling further down, some of the most liked tweets include Seth, if it makes you feel any better, this is very funny and was completely predictable. It sure does. And then one more down here that just says, Seth, please take down these pictures. You don't own them anymore. Ownership. <laughs> I, I, I just, it, it's just, it's so good, man. It's just so fucking good. And, uh, yeah, I'm, it's just amazing. I love this. Being a big emphasis of NFTs, the fact that they're non-fungible. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're quite fungible, I'm afraid. They've this was all funged. then followed up by the following tweet by More Butter TV, go. who tweeted, Seth Green's subs. Board Ape NFT, which was set to star in its own animated show, was stolen through a phishing scam. Yeah. Green no longer owns the commercial rights to the NFT, and thus the show 
cannot move forward. I am actually sad about this because I was hoping that the Bored Apes NFT TV show would be like, it'll be like the Halo show or it'll be like Game of Thrones season eight or something. Cause like, you know, it's going to be awful, right? So it was going to be so much content that like we could watch it and it would be stupid and we'd make fun of it. Right. It's whatever. And like now we can't like I'm I yeah I lost so much content out of this this is not fair and people are loving this you can see how viral this tweet 000. went already almost 83,000 likes and plenty of cheeky responses pretty much celebrating this or poking fun at this have gone viral as well Charlie That's W because people are fucking tired of hearing from some 20 something investor about how he's gonna be rich on a yacht while you're working in his third mansion in 20 years because his jpeg is gonna be worth three billion dollars people are just fucking tired of hearing this shit everybody knows it's ridiculous it's fucking stupid so yeah they just they don't want to hear it anymore they're tired of it and so yeah it's all your content exactly what if it's a publicity stunt then it worked i think it's fucking hilarious I hope it is. Then we get twice as much content. For example, tweeted this meme. You're laughing. Peep Milf Hunter 69 lost his $200,000 life savings on his booby butt 420 far coin investment. And you're laughing. Honestly, this doesn't yeah. sound any less ridiculous than this whole Seth Green situation or any of the myriad thefts and heists that were successfully yeah. carried out by hackers and thieves. Here's yeah. another tweet that garnered quite a number of likes. Oh, I'm afraid these tokens will be quite fungible. Oh, the voice, that's good. Arrive. Here's one more for good measure. Here, Here we, we have Spider-Man, the guy who stole Mona Lisa in 1911. Here we have Green Goblin, me stealing Seth Green's ape JPEG. You and I are not so different. Now, Seth Yeah, there you go, man. The guy's trying to do what he needs to do. Yeah, voice actor, exactly. You should sue Seth Green for loss of wages due to not having content now. That's a good idea. This is the best Yoink ever. I, it's just... Th the thing is, like, having things that are deregulated, one of the bad things about having them be deregulated is you don't have an enforcement... Uh, you, you can't enforce things. It's harder to enforce things at all. So, like, yeah, people just steal your shit, and it's like, well, uh, well can't you do something about it? It's like, no, not really. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. The stole your invincible. There's no accountability. Yeah. It's like these people, like, I feel like none of these people that get into this stuff have ever been in a video game before. I could have told you this shit would have happened in a second in WoW. And even WoW has more oversight. Like, in WoW, like, you know what we did? People tried to sell extra carries. They were trying to sell carries and undercut me for ICC. Jeff joins their raid on his alt, waits for them to clear all the trash, turns off the ICC buff on Marogar, and the raid wipes because they can't kill the boss anymore because they suck. And then he's like, oh, man. Damn, bro, this group sucks. I'm going to join Asmongold next week. He never has this stuff happen. And then guess what? Nobody, that guy never ran again. And you know what we did? We just sabotaged him. Jeff was sitting over there right next to me. It was not a big deal. We just do what we need to do. And it's like, yeah, you just scam, you just scam people all you want, man. That's all there is to it. And so, like, that's, I know what it's like whenever there's an unregulated market. And I can guarantee you a lot of these little pussy boys that are crying about getting their JPEG saved are not going to be able to exist in an open market. Like, it's just, people are fucking savage, man. They don't even understand it. I have Green Goblin, me stealing Seth Green's ape JPEG. Yeah. You and I are not so different. Now, Seth Green is mm -hmm. insisting that he hasn't lost the rights to produce this NFT show. He tweeted, Not true about me not owning the commercial rights since the art was stolen. A buyer who purchased stolen art with real money and refuses to return it is not legally entitled to exploitation usage of the underlying IP. It'll go to court, but I'd prefer to meet Darkwing84 before that. Seems we'd have lots in common. If by uh -huh. that you mean being suckers, then yeah, you two are practically twins. Here we also yep. have a tweet where Seth Green gives a bit more context for how this phishing scam was carried out. Scam gutter cats clone site. I'm crazy uh -huh. careful with separate wallets and security, but still got got. Luckily, it's art, not crypto, so they can be traced. For anyone that bought them, we can work something out. And he eventually... What if What if uh, they don't live in America? What if they live in Russia? What are you going to work out? What collateral do you think that you have? 
Yeah. What? What do you? What? what what's your? What, what? What do you? What are you thinking going into this? Like what, what? What? What's going on here? Right? It's like yeah. You just pay him money. Yeah. He's gonna extort him for all the money. It's the buyer, not the scammer. Well, why would the buyer? Um, why would the buyer give it back to him? Yeah. Why would they do that? Hope the guy scams again. Yeah. It's just there's no reason to. Discovered the name, the user who just bought so the NFT funny. off of the he knows he can't scammers shit. Yeah. was in fact Darkwing eighty four. Now he's just trying to plead with Darkwing eighty four to please give it back. sell this back to me, give it back give to it me back. somehow. Let's work something oh. out. He seems to on ah. some level know that uh this is gonna cause trouble for his ability it sure will. to have commercial rights to produce this show. He wouldn't seem this mm -hmm. desperate otherwise. As for That's how right. people have responded to Seth Green insisting oh. that, no, I still own the commercial I rights. I saw it. This is so good. Stolen. Well, you've got people like Bob here posting this rather here we famous go. meme. This is Jeff Steitzer, for those who don't know, the, the announcer Halo. voice yep. of Halo Multiplayer. Yep. He can be seen here saying, Bored Ape Stolen. <laughs> which has garnered Oh my fucking god, bro! Like, let's let's do one more again, one more again. We got we gotta get one more. This is fucking great. I love it. Ang, bored ape stolen, <laughs> which has garnered already over eleven. They 000. love now, it, folks, man. You've got people just they sarcastically pointing out the harsh reality of this situation. Crypto nerd, unregulated blockchain currency is the best. Give me all the mm -hmm. coins and tokens without the burden of government regulation. Also, crypto nerd. According to U.S. laws and regulations, the mm -hmm. token is mine. I'm the rightful owner, regardless of what the blockchain says. Ash yeah. See, this is the thing. Is like these people don't understand what really happens in unregulated markets. And like, I had a friend. You know, I had a friend. He's a drug dealer. And uh, you know what happened? Well, somebody just pulled a gun on him, and they pointed it at his head. And it's like, well, I thought you're not supposed to do that. That's that's against the rules. Well, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. He's got the gun. It's right there. Yeah, it just happened. There you fucking go. Welcome to dealing. Yeah, there you go. He's lucky enough to get out of there. Right? He's okay. And uh, Wild West, yeah, it's just that's that's why you don't fucking sell drugs. That's what's scary about it. The problem with unregulated markets is that it isn't regulated. Yeah, there you fucking go. And let me think of another one uh, of something like this. It's the same as like with these people that believe that they're going to be able to make a lot of money in pay to earn games. I cannot imagine being so fucking naive that you think that you're the one that's going to make a lot of money in pay to earn games. Holy fuck. Do you know what's really going to happen whenever a pay to earn game uh, uh, is actually popular? You're going to have people like me, people like, uh, you know, friends of mine, etc., that are going to set up massive fucking botnets and create so many fucking accounts that the currency that you're farming out diligently for eight hours a day is worth less than what a sweatshop fucking worker makes in Malaysia. And you're going to be sitting there losing all your fucking money. Meanwhile, this guy has fucking an entire server rack of 1070s running out accounts that are spamming this shit way faster than you can ever farm it. And all of your value and all of your worth is going to go into the fucking toilet because they're going to be injecting the economy with so much fucking resources that anything that you earn is going to have no value. And they just don't get it. They just don't understand. Why does nobody understand? It makes me so mad. Same with crypto mining. Yes, exactly. It's just so frustrating, man. Artists and creative types uh, get into NFTs for worse. They're tired of publishers take a, taking a cut. Well, luckily, the publisher doesn't take a cut. It's just Darkwing takes the whole thing. <laughs> That's what happened with Diablo 3? I know, I was there. That's why I use it as an example. I get you don't want to champion causes. Topics are exactly what people expect you to. Well, all I'm saying is like, I, I, I can identify what, what I think is going to happen without being like, oh, this is what I'm going to push for and everything, right? And so, yeah, gamers are smarter than average people. I don't know about that. But what I know is the people that think that they're going to make a living with a pay-to-earn game, uh, they're below the average. Chief Palpatine once said, Ironic. You've got this business insider journalist Thomas Maxwell poking fun by saying, my man, the blockchain doesn't lie. If it says Darkwing owns the ape, they own it. And then we got folks just... That's true. Actually, I wonder about that. So, like, if somebody steals something from you... So, l let's think about this. I, I, I don't know. So, like, if somebody steals an NFT, 
And stealing is not a thing in the blockchain. Like, I don't know. Can they actually sue it or have it be, I, there's no law in the books to protect you? Yeah, but there's precedent that can protect you as a, um, it's the same as like, for example, like crypto, for, uh, crypto schemes and, and like the fake crypto schemes can still be considered wire fraud. Like, it, it's not like you have to have a specific law in the book for an overarching law to be applied to it. So it would be phishing. Blockchain doesn't lie. Man, I'm actually really trying to think about this. I don't know. I, I'd really actually be curious to, you know, like, I hope like somebody who's like an intellectual property lawyer who has like experience on this talks about this. It's like, what could somebody do? Because like my, my, uh, my like gut reaction is they can't do anything. Y yeah, like I, I, I don't know, man. Offering the harsh truth, like Andres Guadamus here, who tweeted, the art was not mm -hmm. stolen because the NFT is not the art. The NFT is some metadata with a link to some art, not the art itself. You didn't buy any yeah. IP. At best, you got a license to use someone's art, and the license is dependent on the possession of a token. Here we have another user who speculated, but he didn't steal your art. He stole a receipt that points to a link where the art is. Surely you knew what you were out buying at the time, no? And then he added on top of that, oops, spoke too soon. Board Yacht Club NFTs come with copyright so yeah looks like green did lose the ip instead of not really having it which is way funnier there's actually a section in board yacht club's official website that details ownership yeah, of these nfts and here's a section on commercial use here we subject go. to your continued compliance with these terms yuga labs llc grants you an unlimited worldwide license to use copy and display the purchased art for the purpose of creating derivative works based upon the art, commercial use. Their policy is whoever purchased the NFT art has the right to use it commercially however they want. And in the case of Seth Green, sure, he got scammed out of his NFT, but yeah. that NFT eventually got bought by Darkwing84, so now he can use it commercially however he wants as the blockchain shows that he is currently the owner of the NFT art that the show was supposed to be based off of. The NFT... I think that... Like, if you buy something from a pawn shop that's stolen, the police can take that away from you, right? I'm pretty sure they can. Yes, they can. So there's precedent that this can happen. Now, obviously, like, buying an Xbox 360 that got stolen is much different than buying a Bored Ape. But I, I uh, not everyone is an American, Mmm, that is very true. That is very, very true. The art that Seth Green no longer quote unquote yeah. owns and therefore can't use it commercially as it's not his blockchain, not his NFT, his receipt anymore. Now here we yep. have New Salad BuzzFeed News reporting on this with a headline that reads, Someone stole Seth Green's board ape, which was supposed to star in his new show. The actor has been... Yeah, there it is. It's right there. It, it was supposed to be the star. It involves actual money. The government does not rec recognize crypto as currency. Um, It involves actual money. The government does not recognize crypto as currency. Uh, let, let me think about this. I actually, I, I think that like if, if both of the people were in the United States, I think that this would actually be a more interesting court case for me than the Johnny Depp one. If you want me to be totally honest, like I would, I would probably watch that more than I watched the Johnny Depp one because I, I, I find it to be so interesting because in my opinion, I think this is going to be uh, a, a bigger and bigger thing. Uh, absolutely. They recognize it as securities, not currency. But, like, if somebody is in, let's say, like, Bolivia, right? Or they live in Albania. And, like, this, uh, this Albanian fiend just steals all of your fucking monkey pictures. What are you going to do? What, do you, what are you going to do? He's got, the, he's got the monkey pictures. What are you going to do? And it's like nothing. Yeah, you're not going to do a fucking thing about it. Do you think they care? Yeah. I don't think the government would give a shit about that. It, it, it's just like, whatever. Uh, bring freedom to Albania? I have no idea. The whole thing is just an elaborate investment, advertisement for the show. I don't think so at all. Because I think that NFTs are something that... Uh, NFTs thrive and they exist because people believe in them. 
it's almost like, um, okay, so like this is a this is an abstract, right? So like you know how like in some uh, in, in some types of like uh, mythology and things like this that gods are gods because people believe in them. Uh, it's like Jesus. Yes, yes, yeah. It, that's what I was going going with, right? Yeah, like basically, like the people worship them. It's, it's like often used in like Greek mythology, for example. Like the gods uh, are you know th this powerful because this many people worship them. Well, if you do something and it says, "Hey, this god's not actually a god," and then people stop worshiping them, are they a god anymore? No. So I think what happens is that the moment that somebody creates like a a crack in like the in like the integrity of something like this the whole thing falls apart it's like a glass house or it's like you know it's very it's like a windshield right a windshield of like tempered glass the moment that like there's one hole or one break in it the entire thing shatters instantaneously because you start asking this question well if it could happen to him how could it happen to me a house of cards yeah i think that's even better yeah a glass four yeah it's a house of cards the moment that like anything shows any degree of um you know weakness then it's just immediately valueless pleading on twitter with darkwing84 who bought his ape from a scammer mm -hmm. to return it in this article they actually spoke to some lawyers who have chimed in on this situation and while the legal boundaries of nfts are yet to be solidified because this is such an unregulated landscape it doesn't sound like things are looking particular i do think that you will probably have people using precedent from wire law and wire fraud that's what coffeezilla talked about whenever he was talking about the ice poseidon theme or sorry a scam and so that's what i'm kind of expecting so you do have like an abstract precedent for it but i don't think that it's like there's nothing specific at all particularly good for seth green it's definitely going to be a complication mm -hmm. on may 8th an anonymous Let's scammer swiped four of green's nfts True. in a phishing scheme green mourned his stolen assets on twitter where he announced the losses of a board ape two mutant apes and a doodle which were transferred out of green's wallet after he unknowingly interacted with a phishing site yeah one of the mutant apes was flipped for forty two thousand dollars motherboard reported transaction ledgers show the board ape was also sold by a scammer by the scammer to a pseudo anonymous collector known as darkwing 84 who purchased it for more than two hundred thousand dollars yeah wow with uh that much money at stake i don't think he's keen on just like giving it back unless uh seth green has quite a bit of money to so pull. all right seth okay i'll give me 20 bucks i guess i'll give you the two hundred thousand dollar eight back yeah i guess so i mean absolutely yeah it's like i guess i gotta have to give it back guys oh my god scams have been happening so long i have no sympathy for seth uh how can anyone take anything seriously it can simply be stolen via phishing um <laughs> good question yeah good or question his way to uh buy this from the nft owner the article continues the nft uh -huh. was then swiftly transferred to a collection called gbe vault which is where it currently sits and there really doesn't seem much in the way of recourse to get this back again this is just such an unregulated landscape that you know what are you gonna do and once a scammer True. manages to what sell that do? nft getting that nft back becomes a much more complicated matter it's kind of a genie that you cannot really put back in the bottle from what I understand. And as far as how lawyers have interpreted the situation, yeah, here I'm we curious. have a tax and litigation attorney at Alston and Bird LLP, Daniel Dubbin, who said this, if the current owner wanted to cause trouble for Seth Green, they probably could because that person becomes the holder. So the owner of it on the blockchain is the holder of also the copyright. So the copyright does not exist independently from the image. So so the copyright exists uh, in tandem with the image. So Darkwing, Darkwing is Seth's boss now. That, that's about right. Um, why are you even following this crap? Um, I, well, why do you think? Yeah, why do you think? I think it's funny. Yeah, it's 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 interesting and funny. This is this is like for me. This is prime content. Like, this is the kind of stuff that I look forward to every day. Like, if I wake up in the morning and I see something like this, this is a good day. Of the commercial I love it. usage rights. Now, if the buyer knew they were buying something that was stolen, uh -huh. then potentially there's some legal recourse. But if that's not the case, 
then yeah. it's going to be a complicated have matter. To prove intent. Here's what Eric Goldman, an intellectual property and technology law professor at Santa Clara University, said: Bona fide purchasers are legally protected if they buy an item not knowing that it's a hot item. There will be a lot of questions about whether they're buying a stolen NFT and not doing their homework. And then tax and litigation attorney Daniel Dubin added this: Because NFTs aren't physical goods, it's interesting to imagine the different ways that IP rights can be affected and the interesting new IP issues that can arise from the fact. I think we're just scratching the surface. How the law develops over time to actually encompass NFTs will be interesting to see, though my hope... Oh my god, man. This is just... Bro, oh my fucking god. This is so funny. Uh, new lawyer jobs? Yeah, this is crazy. So nobody has any idea what's going to happen here. Actual data on the blockchain is a URL. HTTP, the, the image IP is a separate matter. Well, oh, you have to be right about that because it, it, am I right about this? That the the sports companies that sell the like clips of the sports moments still retain the intellectual property of the original image, but maybe it's different because that existed and that was created off of the blockchain and in like a real a, a real place, right? There was a there was an initial IP to exist, so like that could be different too. Holy fuck! Bro, we got to get, like, somebody on here that knows what they're talking about to talk about this. Like, I've got to I've gotta fucking have somebody on to talk about this. This is so cool. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. They're also block NFTs you can in multiple ways. Holy shit. CoffeeZilla. I'll watch the CoffeeZilla video after this. I think the, the, the video about this is only, like, five minutes is that nfts will crash and burn and vanish from existence so long as the intentions behind them continue to remain greedy continue to yeah. essentially be about these pyramid schemes and ponzi schemes it's hard to sympathize with the nft bros and the people trying to promote this crap when they are actively trying to get people to participate in a landscape that is rife with all these awful well i think that they have to get people to participate in it because it, it's kind of like one of those like pyramid scheme type things right where the people that if these things are to have value they have to be valued by the entire culture because if they only have value to the people that care about them then they don't really have any value so that's why they keep pushing it as value that's why they keep pushing it as if it's important because that that's the uh that's the only way that they actually have value right i mean that that's literally all there is to it yeah it's like religion um like pokemon cards yeah it's a lot like pokemon cards so money well no it's not like money at all because if you go and you say like oh well my money uh you know my money is worth more and then you just go and take something, people aren't going to take the money for it. Like, yeah, the whole culture. And also, like, if you steal somebody's money, the police come to your house and they arrest you. That's the difference. Is it like, yeah, if you're printing your own money, you get arrested. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not the same fucking thing, man. It's not like money, okay? Like, I'm sorry to say, guys. And a comment, what's this here? Look at the Soulbound tokens and compared to what happened to Seth. Soulbound tokens, that was the thing that Ethereum recently created, right? Something like that? I, I didn't look at it too much. Um, well, let's see this. And uh, But it's the same uh, with money to the Indian scammer, right? Well, yeah, but people aren't getting their money back with that at all. Absolutely not. So, conceptually, of course, U.S. money is backed by the biggest military in the world? Exactly. Exactly. Because you're right. Fiat currency, it's all fucking fake, right? But whenever you have somebody with a gun that tells you that it's real, then it's real. That's all there is to it. So far, no beneficial justification has been provided mm -hmm. for their existence. It's all about the attempt of trying to get rich quick. That's why game yep. companies are trying to promote this stuff because they see the financially lucrative nature. They're not yep. looking at it from the perspective of how do we benefit players and customers through NFTs. They're looking at it through the lens of how can we milk the hell out of this new gold rush how can we monetize players more through this how can we make more money mm -hmm. through this regardless of whether it's beneficial to players or not regardless of how harmful nfts have proven to yeah. be not just for the environment but also for people who are partaking in this not knowing what they're really getting into who only got into it because you've got these celebrities and these big companies saying I think that a lot of people get into it because they see how much somebody makes with an nft and then after that, they want to make their own NFT. It's that simple. So, like, for example, um, 
the reason why I started uh, the virtual exchange thing back in like 2012, uh, I was going to do like a cryptocurrency, like a video game currency exchange website where you could buy and sell it. The reason why I did that is because I had a guy in my guild that ran a website and he made like millions of dollars doing this. Now he went to jail because he was scamming people, but like, I already saw what he, he told us what he did wrong and like how they got him. So it's like, well, at least I won't do that. I'm going to try to do this a little bit different and, and and that's it. Right? Like, yeah. So it was a little bit different. Yeah. He went to jail. No, no. The thing is like, yeah, I went to jail, but like, it is what it is. But like, that was the idea. Cause he told me, he's, he's, he's told me, he's like, I was making a million dollars a month or something like that. I'm like, that's really good. I, we should probably do that too. It's a great idea. And I think that's the same thing with people with NFTs. Is AC Cody? No, it was a guy I knew in WoW. Uh, I, I never met him. And uh, yeah, the guy went on the news and shit. Yeah, the guy was on the news and like everything. Uh, yeah, it was a big, big fucking thing. They even, and, and the way they caught him, by the way, is he was negotiating the scam parts of what he was doing on World of Warcraft. And so they had to pull the logs from Blizzard. And so that's how, uh, th that's how it all came together. And uh, yeah, it was fucking, it was fucking nuts, man. And so yeah, I, I think that that's what people do is they see other guys that are doing really well, and then it's like an advertisement because it's like, oh, if this guy's doing it and he's popping off, I should do it and I'll pop off too. This is the wave of the future. Claiming, oh, look mm -hmm. at all these benefits that NFTs Sean will Hogan, provide yeah. while setting unrealistic yeah. expectations, all to get people hyped for this thing that they can continue milking at the expense of those who are not part of the lucky few elites who will sure. benefit from this crap. So yes, suffice it to say, I feel zero sympathy for Seth Green mm -hmm. in this situation. I feel zero sympathy for anyone trying to promote something that is ultimately harmful to create artificial scarcity where there doesn't need to be yep. to turn art into investment opportunities. And not to say that big money doesn't circulate around art, but mm -hmm. they aren't just trying to goad investors, they're trying to turn the public into investors and creating these markets that they can exploit the public from. It's ultimately about goading and luring the ignorant and then just taking advantage of them. So yeah, what else is there to well, say? That's other exactly than what it is, right? Is that they want to have more people that engage with what they do because what they're doing is more valuable the more people that engage with it. So it's in their best interest to give these things high value because then those things will continue to have that value. Yeah, that's all it comes down to. Modern Beanie Babies. NFT is zero use. Um, I think that most of these types of NFTs, like whether something like that has use, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I think that most people can agree that like these like collections of NFT pictures, they're not really helping anybody. Let this situation among the mm -hmm. myriad other thefts and heists in the thousands to hundreds of millions of dollars that I've reported on serve as a lesson and as a warning that this is what NFTs are all ultimately about. Yeah. Unless there's some major change to the intentions behind them and their application that actually brings about beneficial elements to you know the populace as a whole, I will never accept NFTs as something that should be normalized. And I'll continue to laugh in the face of those who try to exploit NFTs and then got burned for it. Or at the very least, that's one man's take on the True. latest epic fail surrounding True NFTs. And real. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Seth Green's Board Ape Yacht Club NFT getting stolen, oh leading to the commercial rights surrounding his oh upcoming God. NFT show being called into question, and it essentially putting his show on hold until something can be done about this. Share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. The demigods are each and Okay. I, I, I knew you guys were saying it, and I was like, I was going to let it go all the way out. I wanted you guys to hear the end of it. Listen, we've watched this guy's videos before. I think he makes great news videos, especially whenever he goes through all the tweets and shit like that. Go ahead, give him a like, give him a sub. This, these videos are great. I don't watch all of them, uh, but he's got a bunch of other ones on his channel, just for other types of like little stupid funny news stuff like that. So if you guys want to take a look at it, there's the video right there. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, give him, I'll give it a sub. I'll give it 
the like too, okay? How about that? And uh, we'll look at the, um, what do you call it? We'll look at the CoffeeZilla one. It's a quick five minute video, okay? How is this any different than the US government taking uh, back Bitcoin? They pay to ransom holders versus protection, not taking sides, just make a point. Here's one thing that I've always said is that if you can't enforce ownership for something, you don't own it. If it can be taken away from you, you don't own it. Yeah, you can't own something that people can take away from you. Personal ownership of anything is a human construct. It's not real. And to the extent that something can be taken away from you, then you don't own it. It's the government. Like, for example, you know, a great example of this is eminent domain. Uh, government says, like, listen, we need your house. And you're like, well, you can't have my house. They're like, OK, well, here's your house. We're going to take here's some money and we're taking the house. That's it. It's not your house anymore. That's it. Yep. Can't do shit. There's no recourse. You can't stop them. If you try to physically stop them, they'll just arrest you and put you in jail. You're nothing. Keep that in mind. That's this why you need guns. What do you think you're going to have happen? You go and shoot a construction worker that comes over there? They're going to bring 20 cops over there and shoot you. Then you're dead. And guess what? They kill you, and then they say they didn't do anything wrong. And you're, you're fucking dead. Like, that's it. It's done. Uh, people are just like, they got, they got no idea what's, what's going on, man. No idea. Here we go. Animated series about NFTs may be canceled oh my God. after its main character, a board ape, was stolen. The That's the main character? VCon, which, if you don't know, is where a bunch of influencers gather together to worship Gary V. And oh, one wow. of the speakers, this guy, Seth... Gr Wait, Gary V? When does Gary V ever stream on Twitch? How are you going to have a Twitch fucking hoodie i never see this guy on twitch when does he ever fucking stream yeah it's it's not at all like yeah what, what the hell man he's he is he scamming is he is he posing man oh my god the speakers he does this guy seth green there he came is. to show off his world premiere trailer of a show about nfts whose main character is an NFT. Wow. This show features Seth Green's bored ape as the hero of the story, a crying monkey named Fred Simeon. <laughs> and I can't play the whole trailer because they have some copyrighted music that's going to be claimed in a microsecond. No, of course. But let me describe it to you. It's a bunch of NFTs in a bar with humans. It's kind of awkward. Didn't they do this in the 90s? Didn't it? So it's like Space Jam? So so it's, it's, it's Space Jam. Like... <laughs> Yeah, Roger Rabbit. Oh my god. I love it, man. This is amazing. Cool world. Yeah. Holy fuck. And not in a funny way. I mean, yeah. I get they're going for a mix of real life and cartoons, but I can't mm -hmm. take your show seriously when one of your characters has Ethereum for eyes. Not to mention their love. Bro, that guy looks like a, um... Take your show seriously when one of your characters has Ethereum. Wait, look at that. Just looks like a crackhead. What is this? for eyes not to mention oh their love God. interest is about as believable as the couples in 90 day fiance but there was one part of it that got a chuckle out of me and that's when gary v appeared on screen pretending to be a human hey gary i too frequent pubs often fellow kids anyways as oh soon as the God. trailer ends seth green reveals that there's a bit of a problem a few days before he'd actually had his main character stolen from his crypto wallet or as he says, Fred was kidnapped. I bought that in uh, July of 21 and have spent the last several months developing and exploiting the IP to make it into the star of this show. And then days before, his name is Fred, by the way. Days before he said to make his <laughs> world debut, he's literally kidnapped. <laughs> now I don't understand why I I kind of want to see what he actually said yeah he thinks it's so funny it, it is funny yeah it is funny this is great the crowd is laughing here at Seth losing his main character because this is actually a really big deal the show is yeah. possible because he owns the board ape nft see, right every board ape nft comes with a commercial art license that is, it allows the owner this is what to we create saw. sort of anything they want. Shoes, clothing. Even you know, somebody says it could be a publicity stunt. I think that you could be right, but I think that it also 
to the extent that this can happen, I think that it's a massive net negative for NFTs as a whole because it shows that there's no real, like you can't, you can't own or control it. You know, like, yeah, this hurts NFTs a lot. So like, yes, it could be a marketing scam. Yeah, sure. But like this completely hurts the integrity of NFTs because people can see this and be like, well, wow. So this guy just got his thing stolen. I thought this stuff couldn't get stolen. TV shows with that character. Now, what yeah, this can't, means, can't though, do anything about is that yeah. when the thief stole this NFT, publicity. they also stole those IP rights, uh -huh. meaning Seth Green is no longer the owner of those commercial rights. Surprise! Which makes his show kind of illegal. And this whole thing is so yep. ironic because that's the whole pitch of NFTs, isn't it? Like, you truly own something. You possess it. But if a scammer mm -hmm. steals it from you, in what sense... Do you now own it? It isn't clear, especially since true. that bored ape that Seth owned has now been sold on the secondary market to somebody by the name of Darkwing84. Seth Green has Damn. tried to reach them on Twitter saying, quote, looks like you bought my stolen ape. Hit me up so we can fix it. Now, Darkwing hasn't responded to this, and technically, until he does, he's the real owner of these commercial use rights, not Seth Green. And all Seth can do is tell people he's going to make those scammers pay. Uh, can I gonna... message this guy on Twitter? Um, Darkwing84, right? Is that what it is? Darkwing84. Okay, here we go. Um, we've got him. Oh, shit. It doesn't say, he doesn't say anything about it. God damn it, man. Okay, yeah. It looks like he's not active on Twitter. That is just too fucking bad. Invite him to the show. Bro, if I could, I would bring him on right now. I would bring him on at this exact moment to have a conversation about this. But um, tell him to delete it. Oh, <laughs> Delete the fucking thing. That's great. He's online. No, I, I can't DM him. I, I will. Um, I'll follow him. And how does he even know that that's who it is? Like the guy OpenSea account. Oh, it's on his OpenSea. Okay, he's got it linked there. Okay, I get it. I'm Darkwing DM me. Okay, sure, thanks. Well, I follow them on Twitter. So if he follows me back, I will interview this guy. Oh my God. Yeah, I will. I'll bring kick him on down stream any if door I can. he has to to recover this NFT. If there's a door to kick in, mm -hmm. I can promise you, I'm gonna kick the door in for us. But let's yeah. be honest with ourselves. The only thing Seth is going to be kicking is himself. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you guys right now, not much of a chance they find this guy. Even though Seth Green says he has the best people on the case. Uh, I'm already in tune with the best authorities that you could get. Uh huh. The means to be able to chase this a little bit. It's the matter of whether that where it is is a person, is some um, foreign financial conglomerate, is some massive yeah like what if he finds out that it's in china it's like some random guy who lives in china it's like uh give it back the guy's like no seth's like please the guy's like no he's like ah fuck all right show's canceled guys that's it it's done yep it's done too bad scam house somewhere we'll, we'll figure it out i got some uh-huh now, of course, I don't know who this crack squad of crypto investigators are. Yeah. Maybe they hired Liam Neeson to find the hackers. I don't know. But in my experience, the first thing most investigators mm -hmm. are going to tell you is that the only way to track down hacks like this is if the scammer kind of makes a mistake. I mean, it's possible to track down the wallet, you know, where the stolen NFT went, of course. Yeah. But finding the actual people behind it is nearly impossible in a yeah. lot of these cases. So yeah, Seth Green probably isn't getting his NFT back anytime soon unless he pays for it and hopefully isn't extorted. Until then, his crypto NFT show looks like it's probably on hold, which honestly- Wait, so what if somebody stole the NFT and then after the show was out, sent a DMCA complaint to have the show removed? Like, I'm pretty sure that this could happen, right? And they would have to shut it down. That's like some, dude, that's like some, that is godlike, man. Oh my god.
They could sue, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's nuts. And for the profits as well. Darkwing joined Twitter in 2021. Uh, the hacker's account showing off he has it. He's trying to sell it back to Seth. Uh, yeah, I bet. Maybe for the better. I mean, I'm sorry to Seth Green. I'm sorry that happened to him. But uh -huh. for the world, for humanity, I think it might be overall a good thing. Just me personally, I guess. I don't yeah. like shows built around NFTs. Kind of for the same reason I don't like the Minions movie. It's a whole piece of art built around only selling you some kind of stupid cartoon figure at higher and higher prices. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I get it. Art has to make money. Sure. But when the entire purpose of the thing is to make the price go up, go to the moon, it's just never that interesting. The only real difference I can see between this new show that was going to come out and like those hacky merch movies it's just really that when you buy a Minions plushie and it gets stolen, you lose 10 bucks. If you're Seth Green and True. you lose your board ape, you lose hundreds of thousands and you might lose your TV show. Anyway, that's just crazy, man. Anyways, oh my that's God. That's basically all I wanted to talk about. See ya. This guy does all the videos about the NFT shit. Like, I, I, I love seeing this. Like, he actually, like, pops off on NFTs. We've watched so many of them. This is just, like, a quick five-minute video. But, uh, again, I'm sure that we'll probably uh, scan. It, that's the scam itself. Darkwing buying it, which just add 200 k to the value of the NFT, then sell it back to Seth for profit. So you think that it's all part of an inside job? I think that you could be right about all of that, but I do think that this entire fiasco devalues NFTs in the mind of the public. You guys you guys agree with me on this or what? Yeah, like that that's kind of how I see it, right? Is like that's that's what I would go through and uh I, I would go and, and, and say that for sure. Yeah, yeah, to me, absolutely. The public doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. It will make them care less and it will make the value even less than what it is.